Alright, hey guys, so in this video we're going to go over how you can fix your achy, creaky, clicky, painful knees. If you need to do some rehab um, or if you've had achy, painful knees, this is going to be a very valuable video for you. Um, all of these exercises will be things that you can do from home. If you're in a gym, obviously there's a lot more variation that could be added to this. Um, so first things first is ultimately to get any, drive any great result, we need a program that is designed for you that meets you where you're at and is specific for you. Um, and also we need consistency with that program. We need that program to be done consistently and to be progressed over a period of time and that's ultimately what the driver of results is. Um, however, let's get to it. So first thing we need to understand is that you know, a lot of knee issues aren't actually driven from the knee. They're driven from poor foot stability and poor hip stability. Um, ultimately, the knee is a reasonably simple joint in that ultimately it's just designed to bend back or bend and, and straighten, bend back and forwards. Um, doesn't like any, too much sideways movement, it needs to be a little bit resilient for that. However, generally it, it's just pretty much going to go back and forward. Um, it's actually our feet and our hips that dictate the direction of our knee. Um, you know, so have a weak foot, have a stable foot, have a weak hip, have a stable hip. You know, ultimately it's our feet and our hips that are going to dictate where our knee goes. Um, so first thing we're going to work on is foot stability and hip stability. So first exercise we're going to do here is simply going to be a calf raise. So these can be done, you know, a calf, calf raise is a simple exercise, which is a great exercise to be able to strengthen our feet and our calves and just our lower, lower leg, like all, that, all the muscles around our ankles. So you could do this on the edge of a step at home, on the edge of any, you know, stable surface that's not going to, um, you know, that you're not going to trip and fall on. Um, basically, we're just going to go down to a full stretch and then up as high as we can. Control down to a full stretch, up as high as we can. So with this, we can just do two seconds down, two seconds up, and we're going to aim for 10 to 15 reps. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is a banded crab walk. So this is going to be a great exercise for glute med, which is a great stabilizer of our hips. Um, this is also going to create a little bit of lateral um, you know, stress on the knee, which will be great for the surrounding ligaments um, and, and tendons that will be challenged by that lateral, lateral stress. So how are we going to do it? We can use one of these loopy um, TheraBands, or we can use like a booty band and put that down just below our knees. Um, but how are we going to do it? We're going to grab one of these bands, we're going to twist it over, pull it up and anchor it on our hips. Then from here we want to step up, step across, step up and step through. Step up, step across, step up, step through. So we're going to go around 10 up and then 10 back for a total of around 20 reps. When doing this, we don't want our knees to be knocking in, we want our knees to be tracking over our feet as we step. Um, so that is a banded crab walk. We're gonna do 20 reps of those. All right, and the third exercise we're gonna to do to really work on our glutes even further is gonna be a hip thrust. We're gonna do it with a elevated foot position. So you can have your feet up on the edge of the couch. Um, this is gonna challenge our hamstrings a little bit. Now hamstrings do go over our knee joint and stabilize the knee joint a little bit from the back side of our knee. Um, so yeah, heels up on the edge of a couch or a chair or something. From here, we're just gonna drive our hips through, squeeze our bum really hard, and then control back down. Drive up, squeeze our glutes really hard, control back down. And we're gonna go for 10 to 15 reps of those as well. Okay, so a couple of things with the function of, obviously, you know, of the knee joint itself. So, as we said before, the knee is, is really guided by the foot and the ankle. Um, if we look at our ankle joint, our medial malleolus is sitting more anterior or sitting further forward than our lateral malleolus. This, this bone sits further back, this bone sits a little bit further forward. So that means that this joint is ultimately, it's not designed your ankle joint isn't designed to go straight forward. I mean, it does, but it's ultimately designed to go a little bit laterally. So your knee ultimately should, 
as you squat down or as you bend down or use your, your, you know, your knee and you go through different movement patterns, your knee should actually track a little bit laterally rather than straight forward and it definitely shouldn't travel you know, medially. It shouldn't tra travel this way. It should be staying a little bit laterally um, you know, over or on the outside of your foot as you go down into a squat. And honestly, like just that part alone for a lot of people will really, really improve knee pain. If your knee has been tracking in rather than tracking in an optimal position, uh, that'll be a really, really great help straight away. The other thing we want to look at is zones. In terms of our knee progressing over our toe, um, there's, we, can, you know, we could just say the further that your knee progresses over your toe, the more stress that is placed in the knee. And obviously, um, you know, with these next couple of exercises I'm going to show you, a big thing is obviously we want, to, we want to increase the resilience of our knees. However, we don't want to put too much stress on them that they can't handle the stress and that we make aches or pains or injuries worse. So it's always about you know, give, applying enough stress, but being able to respond positively to that stress. We don't want to overload something that's already you know, weak or, or isn't very tolerant to stress at the moment. So we can look at the knee zone or knee over toe zones as being, first of all, zone one is pretty much straight vertical shin. And you know, if we, if we are doing, for example, squats, and we've pretty much got a vertical shin, or a very, you know, very close to being a vertical shin, there's not gonna be a lot of stress on our knees. You know, there's gonna be more stress through our glutes and our hips, um, but not a lot of stress on our knees. So if, you know, if you're, you can't squat, or you're, you've had pain when squatting or doing different movements like this, try and have a, begin with a vertical shin. You know, it's still gonna get you moving, it's still gonna train a lot of the other muscles around the joint, but it's not gonna put much torque through the joint. Um, the next zone would be, you know, knee sort of over your midfoot, so like a little bit further forward. Next zone would be, you know, getting towards your toe. And then, you know, the third, the final zone would be really progressing over your toe. Obviously, as you go through each of those zones, your knee is getting in a, you know, now being in this final zone, it's in a position where, you know, if we're doing a squat or a lunge or, you know, especially if we're loading those positions with weights, with dumbbells or barbells or this sort of thing, we're starting to now put a lot of torque through the knee. There's a lot of stress being put through the knee. So ultimately, you know, in terms of rehab, we want to be able to progress to getting to that place, but you really have to meet yourself where you're at. Um, so you want to start in zone one and you'll progress as time allows, you know, as your recovery allows, as your pain levels allow as well. Exercise number one is going to be a wall sit. So, you know, we can probably go for 30 to 60 second holds. I'm going to give you a couple of different variations. This might be it first time. Then we might progress to here. Then we might be able to bring our feet a little bit further back. Then we might even be able to go a split stance where we alternate from one foot for like 30 seconds and we bring the other foot forward, the other foot back, and we do the same on the other side for 30 seconds. So there's a couple of different progressions with a wall sit. Um, you know, starting in this position, dropping down to neutral, bringing our feet further back, and then also doing split stance, split stance. Okay, so exercise number two is gonna be a squat. Uh, this can be done as a sit to stand, it can be done as just a normal squat. Uh, same rules apply in terms of, um, you know, pain-free range of motion, not working past, a, say, a two out of 10 on the pain-free or on the pain scale. Um, so, you know, it, it might start as we're just going to here and back up. We're going to here and back up. Here, back up. Then we might progress to getting a little bit deeper and back up, a little bit deeper, back up. Then we might progress to really progressing our knees over our toes a lot further. So we might, you know, when we're talking about zones and, and you know, knee over toe zones, we might progress our knees a lot further over our toes now and we go through this range. Um, then we might start to add weight to that if all is feeling okay. So exercise number two is a squat. Um, and ultimately within our squat, we're, we're ultimately trying to get more range of motion slowly, and we're trying to progress our knees over our toes as well slowly as 
pain-free range allows um, and as we can you know, respond positively to the exercise that we're doing. Okay, so exercise three is a split squat. And again, same principles apply. Pain-free range, not going past the two out of 10. Um, ideally, pretty, pretty pain-free. Um, and we wanna progress that as we go. So um, if we do a split squat, you know, we might start with a ver reasonably vertical shin and we might only be going to this sort of range of motion. Might be here to here, here to here. You know, and then as we progress and you know, our knees are feeling better, we might be able to progress a little bit lower and we might be able to get our knee a little bit further over our toe. And then we go to this range. And then as we get better again, we may really, really be able to push it and my ankle's clicking, and progress that knee right over the toe and you know, progress that movement and, and really, really put a lot of torque through the knee. As long as we're progressing and you know, we're having a positive adaptation, you know, there's less pain, there's more strength, et cetera, et cetera, um, then we are good to keep progressing that. So there is exercise number three.